everybody, Ann here, sitting in the tiny house, having my coffee with all of you, and it's freezing gosh darn cold, and I have ran into a problem. Um, I've got my propane heater going, and it, it'll heat this place up pretty quickly, but last night I started, well, actually the last couple times I've burned the wood stove, more smoke has been coming into the tiny house. And I don't know if it's a function of the way that I've been building my fires because um, initially I had it down packed. Everything was great. I pretty much build the fire the same way every time. Just use some different kindling uh, resources each time. Well, the last few times I have lit a fire in the wood burning stove, too much smoke is coming in. Now, when you first start it and, uh, you know, the oxygen is flowing and whatnot until it catches and starts drawing things up and up the pipe um, you might just get a little bit of smoke but nothing like it has been the for the last couple two three times so it looks like I'm gonna have to dismantle at least the outside where it goes up and see if I have too much you know sediment creosote whatever um, blocking the exit basically uh, I need to get that done today it's not something that can wait because I can't keep burning propane all the time. I don't like to burn the propane for heat. Um, and if I want to stay warm, I have to get this situation taken care of. You know, when you live off grid like this, you can't just let things go because then you're either going to freeze or you're going to starve or you're going to roast to death. So I have to go out there and take that big stove pipe off the elbow and see what I got going on in that pipe if it's clear, then it must be the way that I'm building the fires or something else. I don't know. So, yeah, it's a stovepipe cleaning day today. Fun, fun. I have got to disconnect that big, long pipe that goes all the way up there from the elbow to see if I've got any yucky stuff inside of there that needs to be cleaned out. I don't know what's causing the smoke, so I don't know. This, is, this could be the only thing that's changed because I really haven't changed how I build my fires too much so well let me let me just see if I can find anything in there set it down I had to work so hard to get that part on I just didn't want to disconnect it so all I did is I tapped the pipe and brought it down into this part and this is all that came out but look at this can you see that can you see all that stuff blocking those holes that is build up that I need to clean out so I'm gonna have to take this pipe off get a brush clean it out make sure that there's nothing else in there that needs to be cleaned out and then up here I'm not seeing anything in there but I'm gonna get a brush and see if I can bring stuff out and push things down that way uh, and then I might examine it from the inside too
caution, I'm going to go ahead and take apart that whole stove pipe and just bang on it and get all the stuff out if there's anything in there. I mean, I'm out here. I might as well. And then I'll go inside and do the same to, to those. And uh, then I'll let you know how it went. Once it's all done, I, I don't think I need to film all that. That would be so boring. I got this cleaned out pretty well. Uh, this inside as well. There might be a little bit more I could get out. I may do that before I put this on. Um, what I actually ended up doing here, let me show you. The brush really didn't work very well. So I grabbed this metal pole thingy <laughs> and I just shoved it up in there and, you know, did that and then tapped on the side of it and whatnot. Um, I probably could have left it whole and just done it like that. And uh, I got a little bit out. I tapped out a little bit over there. Some fell over there. Uh, a good bit came out right here and this may still be some of the paint curing off of it. Um, and then quite a bit right here. So I'm going to put this back together and before I hook it back up again, I'm going to check the pipes on the inside. It's hooked back up, but what I think, what I think I'm going to need, and yeah, like I said before, this comes out too far because it's just going through the window. Once I install it through the wall, it'll be flush. But when I get ready to move it, what I think I need, and I've seen these. In fact, I looked on Amazon last night. This elbow pipe is not working. It's just, I mean, it, it holds it there. The airflow is okay. But if stuff is going up and it accumulates in the ash and it starts falling back down, it's just gonna be like right here. So nothing is gonna be able to get out. What I need is a T-pipe. Straight, straight, and then a little piece comes down at the bottom. It has a little cap on it. All you have to do is remove the cap, go up in there and clean it out. So that's what I'm gonna start looking for. Um, I may not do it right away uh, because I think I will do that once I actually get it installed through the wall and this uh, there's a double walled pipe inside of this I need a longer one because it's going to have to it just needs to be longer so I'm gonna get the longer three walled pipe and then I'm gonna get a T pipe that will fit that pipe and um, that way all I'll have to do is unscrew a little cap for right now this is gonna be okay but the thing is I is I'm gonna have to come out here and clean this regularly you know, I'm just going to have to clean it regularly. I'm going to have to take that cap off and clean that, clean the little holes in it. Uh, because I think that that may have been what's causing the smoke to come in. So all there is left to do is set a fire. And I will tell you too, I did go inside and check the pipes. And there was virtually nothing inside the, the pipes inside. Just a little bit of, you know, dust and ash. I was able to get that out. Um, so it really isn't in the inside pipe, it's in the outside pipe. So I'm just going to have to clean it regularly until I get, can get my little tea thingy. And um, I think that'll solve a lot of problems. It's one o'clock and I cut up this pumpkin. I uh, chunked up half of it and put it in the refrigerator. I'm going to give the rest of the chickens. And I don't know guys, you think there's more eggs? We're going to find out. Hello chickens! Come on out and get your nummies. Yeah, I kind of spread it out so there won't be any fighting. Right on girls and boy. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. All right, they all made it through the night. All they like to dig down in there and kind of dust bathe in certain areas. Okay, you guys, it is the moment of truth. Let me see if there are any more eggs. <laughs> yeah, I'll put some of that back in there. Let's see. Um, no, I don't think that they would be laying over there. I'll oh, see, I got them both hanging up now. They've been kicking this around really nicely. Nothing so far, you guys.
Nope. Just the two fake eggs. That's okay. I'll put them over there. Because that's where they laid the last time. That's all right. And what I'm noticing in here, too, it is gosh darn warm in here. It is literally warm. As soon as I walked in, it's like I'm almost sweating. This deep litter method creates more heat, so that's pretty awesome. I managed to keep the chickens in the yard. So far, it's like 2 p.m. and they're, they, well, one flew the coop and uh, I was able to get her back in. It was Patsy. I can tell because um, I'm calling the one with the biggest comb, Mama. <laughs> and I think she's the one that laid the egg. Patsy is the one with the smallest, palest comb. And there's two that actually have pretty big combs. And then there's one more that's kind of in between. Anyhow, um, I'm going to light my fire tonight, and then I'll let you know in tomorrow's video how that went, whether or not I got a bunch of smoke back in, or whether I've solved my problem. I really think I've solved the problem. So that's been enough of me jabbering. So that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.